Low light capability is one of the most prominent features of the OM system OM1. Even so, reducing image noise is always a concern for the demanding photographer. Let's go beyond just setting a low ISO number and push the OM1 to its technical limits. My name is Thomas Eisel. I'm a professional photographer from Vienna, Austria. The OM system OM1's truly spectacular 4 thirds backside illuminated LIFMOS sensor with its standard sensitivity range from ISO 200 to ISO 25600 is capable of dealing with virtually every photographic scenario. By selecting an ISO number from this standard sensitivity range, you always get usable results. But with some optimization, the already impressive noise performance of the OM1 can be tweaked even further. There are two simple rules that you should follow when working with the OM1. The first rule is that you should always select the lowest possible ISO number. But at the same time, you should not go below ISO 200. And the second rule that you should always follow is that you should never push a RAW file in post-production. Let's take a closer look where these two rules come from. First and foremost, it is important to know that the OM1 is not ISO invariant. Instead, the OM1 uses a sophisticated three-stage analog to digital converter architecture for optimized noise performance. The three stages are ISO 200 to ISO 800, ISO 1000 to ISO 12800 and ISO 16000 and upwards. In practice, this means that when you select an ISO number below ISO 200, you actually end up with a noisier image than when recording the same image with ISO 200 instead. Now what happens if you push a RAW file in post-production? There is a chance that you end up pushing the RAW file from one sensitivity range to another sensitivity range of the OM1. So you are pushing it from one stage to another stage. But the problem is that when pushing a file in post-production, you are actually just brightening the image. While when you would select the appropriate higher ISO number at the moment of capturing the image, you would make use of the OM1's dedicated advanced analog to digital conversion architecture and that would actually lead to a better signal to noise ratio. You don't get a better signal to noise ratio when you just brighten an image in post-production. I've prepared two sample shots. One of them was captured at ISO 12800. Let's zoom in. The file has not been treated with noise reduction so you can see all the image noise. When we take a look at the second image right now, this file looks a lot worse. And the reason is quite simple. This file was captured at ISO 800 and pushed four stops. So it is equivalent to ISO 12800. But just look at how much worse the image noise is in this image. Also, note the excessive color shift. The effect is most severe when you push an image shot in the ISO sensitivity bracket of stage 1 to the ISO sensitivity bracket of stage 3. I'd say that this even makes the images unusable. So really, this should be avoided at all cost. Electronic viewfinder cameras produce a lot of heat and elevated internal camera temperature always results in image noise. So heat management is an important consideration. For general photography, 
there are three optimization options. The first one is setting the viewfinder frame rate to normal instead of high, as the constant high frequency sensor readout will lead to heat buildup inside the OM1. The second optimization option is to enable the sleep mode in the OM1 and set it to one minute or even enable the quick sleep mode. By doing so, the OM1 will go into sleep mode when not in use and won't produce any heat during this period. The great thing about the OM1 is that it is very quick to boot up from sleep mode, so you shouldn't really miss any shots under normal circumstances. The third optimization option is probably the most effective one, and it requires you to get an HLD10 battery grip for your OM1. The reason why you should do that in order to improve the heat management is quite simple. A battery being drained generates a lot of heat. So having the camera battery as far away from the imaging pipeline as possible drastically improves the heat management. By putting only a battery inside the HLD10, you achieve exactly that. This is very, very efficient. And if you work with the OM1 for prolonged periods, then this really improves the heat management. I can really recommend that. The high resolution shot function of the OM1 is very powerful. Enabling either the handheld high res shot or the tripod high res shot does not only increase image resolution, but also reduces image noise drastically. Whenever shooting still subjects, I recommend turning this function on in order to maximize image quality. I've prepared two sample shots, shot with the extreme ISO number of 102,400, and you can see color shifts, banding, and very prominent image noise. If we take a look at the second shot captured with handheld high-res shot, you can easily see the improvement. There is less noise, no obvious color shifts, and the banding is practically gone. Handheld high resolution shot combined with a high ISO number can be even used to capture high resolution portraits with little to no noise of still subjects. The OM1 has two options for in camera noise reduction. The first one is called noise filter. This function applies digital noise reduction to the image. If you shoot JPEG and the noise filter is turned on, the JPEG file will be altered permanently. When you record a raw image, the image data in the raw file won't be impacted, but the preview you get on the back screen will show the applied noise filter setting. I've prepared some sample shots captured at ISO 25600 Let's zoom in. This is the noise filter set to off. This is low, normal, and high. The higher the noise filter is set, the less detail there will be in the image. The second option to reduce image noise in camera is enabling noise reduction. This feature utilizes dark frame subtraction to combat image noise. So what is dark frame subtraction? Dark frame subtraction is actually a method where the OM1 first captures the image and then goes on capturing a second dark frame. The resulting noise pattern of this dark frame is then subtracted from the previously captured image, altering the image data even of the raw file permanently. This means that noise reduction has to be enabled at the time of capturing the image it cannot be replicated in post-production. Especially when shooting long exposures, noise reduction has a significant impact on overall image noise. The function can be set to either off, on or auto. When set to auto, the OM1 automatically decides whether to take a dark frame or not. 
and it does so based on elevated internal camera temperature, which means that it usually does that when you are taking a long exposure shot. When you set the feature to on, you basically force the OM-1 to perform dark frame subtraction every time you take a shot, no matter how short the exposure time is. Keep in mind that noise reduction is turned off when you use the electronic shutter or a sequential drive mode. When post-processing high ISO RAW files, I recommend using either OM workspace or the in-camera RAW conversion of the OM-1. The noise filter in both of these proprietary options is tailor-made for the OM-1's noise signature and it does an excellent job in getting rid of the noise while at the same time maintaining detail. Compared to third-party software, these options are very reliable, very consistent and require little to no effort. It is noteworthy that OM Workspace also offers an AI noise reduction feature I myself am not a huge advocate of AI noise reduction tools in general, but I have to admit that this one in OM Workspace works very well with OM1 files. I'm not obsessing over image noise and neither should anyone else, especially when working with a camera as good as the OM system OM1. Nonetheless, I'm glad that all these tweaks are available to push the limits of what is possible with the OM system OM1 even further. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing and following me on other social media. See you next time.